A while ago, someone suggested that I should make a video on boost converters. So in case you don't know what a boost converter is, it's a type of DC power converter that takes some DC voltage on the input and then produces a higher DC voltage on its output. So let's say you can put 12 volts into it and then it you know, outputs 24 volts or 30 volts or whatever. Right? The exact voltages obviously depend on which boost converter you get and how you configure it. So let's say that you have a pipe and there is water running through this pipe at speed and all of a sudden someone closes a valve. Now what's going to happen is all of that water moving at speed is suddenly going to come to a stop but that's going to release a huge amount of energy of course so what that does is it produces a pressure spike in that pipe and this is called water hammer and you can try this yourself if you go to a tap in your house you open the tap Actually, don't try this because you might end up you know, ruining stuff if, if the plumbing is not up to it. So, the interesting thing is that this also happens in an electrical system. So, if you have an electric current running through a wire, and you suddenly stop that electric current by, let's say, opening a switch, then that also produces a voltage spike on that wire. And that's because an electric current through a wire produces a magnetic field, and if that current stops, then the magnetic field collapses, and the, the collapsing of that magnetic field induces a voltage spike on the line. And the effect is even greater if it's not a straight wire, but it's a coil, right? Because coils have superior magnetic properties. So if you have a coil of wire, and you run a current through that coil, and the current is interrupted, or the current decreases heavily, that produces a high voltage on that coil. And this is also the main principle that is used by a boost converter to produce that higher voltage on its output, right? The very crude form of a boost converter is just a coil of wire and a switch. But there are a few extra components in a real boost converter that make it usable, shall we say. So here's a schematic of a very simple boost converter. So as you can see, it consists of a coil, a switch, a diode, and a capacitor. Now, that switch is usually not a real mechanical switch, it's a transistor or you know, some kind of solid state electronic switching device. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna draw it as a switch because that makes it easy to understand what it does. So the left side of the circuit is the input. So this is where we connect some kind of power source like a battery. And the right side of the circuit is the output. So this is where we connect some kind of load such as a light bulb or a motor or you know a thing that needs power for some reason. So now the question is, how does this circuit actually work? Well, first of all, the switch is closed, which allows an electric current to flow through the coil. Then, a little while later, the switch will be opened, which causes the current in the coil to decrease rapidly. And of course, the current through the coil decreasing rapidly, well, as we've just learned, that produces an increased voltage across that coil. So now, in this point, we're going to have the voltage across the coil plus the supply voltage. So let's say the supply voltage was 10 volts and the voltage across the coil has now risen to, let's say, 15 volts. That means we now have 25 volts in that point and therefore 25 volts is passed on through that diode into the capacitor and into the output load. And that cycle repeats itself constantly, producing that output voltage. But then the problem with that is that this voltage isn't constant, right? Because when the switch opens, we get this increased voltage but once the switch closes again, well, that point is now connected to ground, so we get zero volts. So the voltage in that point is constantly going up and down between zero volts and, you know, 25 or whatever. But we don't want that, right? On the output, we don't want a voltage that goes up and down. We want a constant output voltage. We want it to be flat and smooth. So this is why we need that diode and that capacitor. The capacitor is like a little battery that holds onto a little bit of charge. So when the voltage gets high, the capacitor is charged up to that high voltage. But then when the voltage drops down again, the capacitor holds that charge for a little while until it goes back up. And that way it smooths out the output, making it the, the nice flat DC output that we want to see. And then that diode is a check valve that makes sure that the charge that's stored in the capacitor 
can't flow back into the circuit, right? If you don't put the diode there, then the capacitor would discharge itself right back into the circuit when the switch closes. So the diode is there to stop the current from the capacitor from going back into the converter. And that way we get the nice smooth output, well, as smooth as possible output um, that we want to see. Now, the output voltage of a boost converter depends on the duty cycle of the switching that we're doing. So if we use a higher duty cycle, which means we basically keep the switch closed for longer at a time, then we get higher output voltage from the converter. If we use a lower duty cycle, which means we don't keep the switch closed very long, then we get a lower output voltage. So what a boost converter does is it actually has a control circuit that controls the switch and that control circuit looks at the output voltage, so it's constantly monitoring its own output. And then what it does is it adjusts its duty cycle on the fly to keep the output at a certain level. So if the output voltage is a bit too high, then it'll reduce the duty cycle of the switching a bit to lower the voltage back down. If the output voltage is a little bit too low, then it'll increase the duty cycle a bit to get the output voltage back up. And so it's constantly regulating itself which is also why usually when you use a boost converter you don't need a voltage regulator at the output because the converter is actually doing that on its own already. The final thing that we need to talk about is the switching rate or the switching frequency. So how many times do we actually switch per second? How fast are we switching? Now typically for any kind of boost converter you know, usually that will be more than 10,000 times per second. So 10,000 is kind of the lowest you'll see. 100,000 times a second is, is more typical, uh, but some of them will even go up to a million times or even more than a million times per second. So very, very fast switching speeds. So why would you want to switch so fast or why would you want to switch a bit slower? Well, the thing is, what you're doing in this boost converter is you're effectively you're storing energy in that coil and then the energy is released from that coil to the output and then you're storing energy again and it's released again and so you're constantly storing energy in that coil and then passing it on to the output so if you want to move more energy you can do two things you can either store more energy in the coil at once or you can do it more often you know switch faster now if you want to store more energy in a coil then you need to make the coil bigger and so your boost converter will be a bulkier device but if you use a higher switching frequency, you don't need to store more energy in the coil because you can move energy more often in one second. And so you can transfer more energy for the same size coil. So by using a higher frequency, you can make a boost converter smaller for a given amount of power, or you can make it more powerful for a given size, either way. On the other hand, if you use a higher switching rate, then your efficiency, the efficiency of the switching transistor that you're using, decreases. And so your converter becomes less efficient if you switch at higher frequencies. So what manufacturers are trying to do is find the right balance between, you know, are we going to go for a very high frequency and, you know, get more power for a given size or, you know, make it even smaller for a given amount of power? Or are we going to make the switching rate lower and get you know, better efficiency from our components? And that's kind of a, a thing that you have to find the sweet spot. So that is all I'm going to say about boost converters for now. I think this video is long enough. That's 200 videos down, <laughs> just like that, finally. Um, and so uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next year.